What's up guys, it's Naf here. So after finishing up at Twin Furies, I did manage to completely run out of overload potions and primarily needed Grimmy Lancer Dime to make super magics and extreme defenses. Along with that, I did finally want to work on my invention. Considering so far, I've pretty much been using newbie gizmos in my current gear just to get me by whilst bossing at God Wars Dungeon 2. So there were a few options, but I did settle on Dark Beasts. Now this is due to a variety of factors, such as they're relatively AFKable, with aggro that's easy to reset, and they're pretty close to a bank once you've completed Morning's End Part 1 or 2. I can't remember if it's both or just the first part, but regardless I did have both of those quests completed. Along with this, they're pretty good at dropping a few other useful herbs, such as Grimmy Dwarfweed and Grimmy Toad Flax, and also drop Noted Adamant Ore, which is a big deal for me as I do want to get my smithing up from 80 to 90 as soon as possible, as I do want to try out some of the tier 85 Tetsu armor from ports, which do require 90 smithing, as I feel it may be a decent upgrade from my current Bandos boots and gloves, but obviously I do need to try them out and see. Not to mention, they are also great at dropping crimson and blue charms, as I also want to push for 96 summoning from my current level 88 as soon as possible for the Pakyak Familiar, so Dark Beasts seemed pretty perfect for me to camp. So in terms of training invention here, as I have completed the quest River of Blood, I do have access to the Sun Spear, which I was using as a ranged weapon and was augmented. So every time it reached level 10, I was able to dismantle it for 523,800 experience and simply go buy another for 600k gold. Now as I was leveling invention, I chose not to augment my legs or body simply because I felt only augmenting and dismantling the Sun Spear would be the most efficient way to gain invention experience at the cost of the least divine charges as possible. As I would prefer to spend more time killing Dark Beasts and getting loot I can use for multiple purposes rather than having to farm energy. So after dismantling around 8 Sun Spears and reaching 60 to Invention, I had run out of Divine Charges, which I was expecting to happen at some point. Luckily I had a fair amount of Brilliant Energies banked and only needed simple parts. These were gotten through disassembling things such as logs and considering I had a ton of maple logs from my kingdom, I did go ahead and disassemble around 30,000 magic logs. And with that out of the way, I had plenty of divine charges but only had two augmenters left and to make those I did need more energies and enhancing components. For enhancing components, I was pretty prepared with around 4000 Slayer Gems banked which I do buy daily when I am picking up insulated boots and fletching supplies from Slayer Masters. So due to running out of gold ore, I only managed to make around 1k Slayer Rings, but that did seem sufficient and along with other jewellery I had from Menaphos pickpocketing, some random pouches I didn't need, and unstrung maple shield bows I made for Fletch XP, I did do a lot of disassembling to keep on top of a lot of components I would need for augmenters and other things. Along with that, I also remembered I had a fair few pairs of insulated boots to disassemble, which as I said, I buy from Slayer Masters daily as they are very cheap and give a variety of useful components. So after doing all of that I was able to make four augmenters before running out of base parts which come from bolts, weapons with hilts and shields. Luckily there's a variety of vendors which sell these types of gear around the game with my favourite vendor being in Berthorpe in the Warriors Guild due to them having a large stock of different weapons and helmets varying from bronze through to adamant. Now with plenty of base parts I was able to make another 5 augmenters giving me a total of 11 which I felt would probably be enough to get me from 62 invention to 75 easily enough. And there we go, after some time I did manage to reach my goal of 75 invention, which in total from 30 at Dark Beasts took me around 49 hours and a total of 18 dismantled Sun Spears, costing me a total of 10.8 million gold. And in terms of loot, I did gain a total of 1,285 Grimmy Lantern Dime, 945 Grimmy Dwarf Weed, 2,370 Grimmy Toad Flax, 6,468 Adamant Ore, 1,030 Crimson Charms, 1,700 Blue Charms, 490 green charms and in total I did profit roughly 35.5 million gold which is in fact profit after factoring in 18 sun spears and a few other items that I was buying daily such as runes. 
So with that out of the way, I was ready to augment my tier 80 melee gear and my Dragon Rider Lance and put some decent gizmos in them that I felt would be best suited for killing Araxi as that's something I really need to start doing. So first up, I wanted the armor gizmo in Patient 3 which did require 5 Zamorok components, so the first thing I disassembled was my War Priest gear, which I never use anymore, so it isn't a big deal, and I actually ended up getting a Devoted too. Now, I didn't realise this was even a possibility of getting, but regardless, the effect does offer a chance your protection prayers will fully mitigate the damage you're protecting from, so it seemed like a decent gizmo nonetheless, and I don't have enough Zamorok to disassemble to try again anyway. Next armor gizmo, I wanted Crackling 3 and Venom Blood, so for this I need Needed explosive components which come from hand cannons or cannonballs and one pestiferous component which only comes from disassembling void gear or the Carisi sword but considering I haven't completed the void stairs back quest that wasn't an option so as you can imagine this is where things start to become pretty painful in saying that I never use my void so I decided to disassemble the gloves to get the one component I needed and luckily I had one hand cannon left from a very long time ago when I was farming a dragon pickaxe so I did have all the components I needed unfortunately though to to use the pestiferous component I had to learn how to use it by doing goblin technology research and to do that I needed access to Dorgashan which you can only do after completing the death to Dorgashan quest which of course I had not done. So an hour or so later I had the quest done and was luckily able to do the goblin research required pretty easily getting the ability to use pestiferous components. And with that out of the way, I was able to use it in a gizmo, although to my dismay, I didn't get either of the perks I wanted and was completely out of explosive components. So I decided to farm a few hand cannons. It took me around an hour and a half to get five, which I was hoping would be enough. And for those wondering, in that time, I did not manage to get a dragon pickaxe, although I do already have one, so I didn't really mind. So the time had come to disassemble the hand cannons and more void gear. So first attempt, I did manage crackling, but I really wanted Venom Blood with it as well. So pretty much every time I got the wrong perks, and each time it costed me another piece of Void Gear, which was pretty sad, and through disassembling all of my Void Gear, I never managed to actually get the gizmos I wanted, with the best one being Crackling 3, although no Venom Blood. So that meant I was currently sitting on 2 out of 4 armor gizmos out of the way. Next, I tried going for Venom Blood and Biting 2. As I've heard, Venom Blood is really effective at Araxi, so I really did want it in something, and Biting was an all-round decent DPS gizmo. So I tried multiple different combinations to get this, and even tried getting Venom Blood with some other useful perks as well, always ending up getting a negative perk whenever I actually managed to get Venom Blood. At this point, I even disassembled my Ganodermic as well, as at this point I had gotten pretty desperate and considering it was kind of like my Void, decent gear but something I never used, I just decided to do it and not really think twice about it, but still no luck. I even tried to get a few more Zamorok components to try again at Impatient 5 by disassembling the only Zamorok duplicates I had left, which were Zamorok Essences, but got a total of zero Zamorok components out of five essences disassembled. So definitely not worth it, but I don't even see myself using those essences. So it was just another thing under the bridge. So through all of those gizmos made, I settled on Venom Blood and Turtling 1, which I know Turtling 1 is useless for Araxi, but I just wanted the Venom Blood benefit and no other armor gizmos had a better perk alongside Venom Blood, and the final gizmo I settled on was Absorbative 2. Equally a pretty weak perk, but it still had a small defensive benefit, and I had quite frankly burned through most duplicates in my bank and didn't want to continue rolling the dice for something better by disassembling what I had left. So now I only had to figure out the two weapon gizmos. First up, I wanted Precise 5, a nice all-round DPS gizmo, which required five Armadillo components, Luckily, I had five pieces of Armadillo War Priest, which like all the other War Priest sets, I never used anyway, so these were the first things to go. Luckily, unlike all of my other gizmos, this was painless and rolled the perk I wanted on the first go, and no real Armadillo gear had to be disassembled. Next, I wanted Biting 2. This came from direct components, which I didn't have, 
but luckily they weren't rare and came from disassembling things such as battle axes and spears, which there were a few vendors for. And after making my first gizmo, I did get Biting 2, which I was happy enough with, meaning I had all six gizmos I needed. So there we go. Everything is now augmented, and although it's not exactly what I wanted, it is somewhat ready for Araxi. Now, with my gear figured out, I just had to restock up on supplies, specifically Overloads and Saradome and Brews. So part of my reason behind picking Dark Beasts was the fact I mainly needed Grimmy Dwarf Weeds and Grimmy Lantadime. So now that I had plenty of those, I only did need to pick up a few secondary supplies, such as Potato Cactus, Eye of Newt, and Crashed Mud Runes, which didn't take any longer than an hour or so. So in the process of making extreme potions, I did manage to finally hit 96 Herblore, which is a massive milestone I had wanted to achieve for the longest time. As I've been putting my Jack of Trades aura into Herblore twice a day for the better part of six to seven months now, only missing the odd day where I was particularly busy. On top of that, it meant I could make overloads at any time now without needing to worry about boosting my Herblore stat, which was a massive convenience. One thing now that I'm not too sure about is what I'm going to be putting my Jack of Trades aura into for the future. I could continue to use it in Herblore for the sake of getting 99, although to me it does seem rather pointless considering I'm not very level driven and I only just seek out requirements for either quests or just beneficial things such as curse prayers, overloads and so on. I may even start looking at putting it in my lowest non-invention skill, which at the moment is 76 farming, just to work off all my skills in general, but I will have to give it a bit more thought and just see. So following that, I did continue making extremes and eventually started making overloads, where I was able to make around 260 overloads before running out of Torstals, which I can hopefully get while PVMing in the future, but nevertheless, that amount of overloads should last me for a good number of boss kills. Following that, I did make Saradome and Brews to use up the birds' nests I had from checking my kingdom some time ago, along with all the toad flaxes I had recently gotten from Dark Beasts. In doing that, I did even manage to get the Herblor pet, which was a nice surprise as it probably is one of my favourite skilling pets. And by the end, I had made around 680 Saradome and Brews and was left with about 100k experience until 97 Herblor. So overall, I managed to get a lot more Herblor experience than I expected and now have a decent amount of supplies for bossing in the near future. So that's pretty much it for this one. I do apologize for the absence of content recently. Working on Herblor and mainly Invention did take me the better part of around 55 to 60 hours of gameplay over the past week and a half, and it has kept me really busy. But nevertheless, I do plan on taking myself to Araxi very soon, and hopefully putting out similar videos to what I did at Twin Furies, where I am essentially no-lifing the boss and putting out regular loot videos, giving highlights and updates on the experience. But considering Araxi is a pretty difficult boss for newbies, we'll have to wait and see. But until then, if you guys have any tips on how to get some of these better perks on your gizmos without having to go insane disassembling your whole bank, I definitely need the advice, so feel free to leave it in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.